All right, Darren, let's talk about fall fertilizer. And the number one question that we get every fall is, can I put my nitrogen on in the fall or not? Well, you certainly can, depending on your type of ground, the lay of the land. There's a lot of different considerations that go into, is fall a good time to put on nitrogen or not? Now, for example, we've got some river bottom ground. It's subject to flooding. You know, two years ago, it went underwater, Brad. Yep. This year, I didn't have a drop of water all summer. <laughs> so you tell me which year we're gonna get. Well, we don't know. And so when you don't know, you just gotta play it safe. We aren't gonna put any nitrogen down on the bottom ground that can flood because some years it floods and some years it doesn't. Okay, and it comes down to two things. One is money lost, money that you're gonna spend and you know not recover because that nitrogen goes down the river or down into the groundwater. And number two is the environmental factors. So in other words, Yes, you can put nitrogen out, and yes, you wasted some money, but not only did you waste money, now you ended up with nitrogen that got in somebody's water somewhere, and that's not a good thing. We've gotta be responsible using our nitrogen, or we as farmers are gonna get more and more regulated as time goes on. So we want you to be very careful with your nitrogen use, and the number one thing you need to know is you have to test your soil for cation exchange capacity. Get that cation exchange capacity test done, and then find out what the reading is, multiply that number times 10, and that will tell you roughly how much nitrogen your soil can hold at any one time. So for example, if you had a 20 cation exchange capacity number, multiply that times 10, that equals 200. So you can have about 200 pounds of nitrogen. If you already have 40 pounds in the soil, you can apply another 160 this fall if you want to. Well, what I get, Brian, is guys that say, I've got clay soils. I know my CEC is around 20 or even just a little bit better. I'm great. I'm no, not going to No, they don't know what their all. CEC is. They just say, I've got heavy ground. Well, I'm here, fine. here's where I'm going. <laughs> they say, well, I've got a 22 for a cation exchange capacity. What do I have to worry about? Well, here's what you have to worry about. You may be raising 150 or 200 bushel corn now, but what are you going to be raising 10 and 20 years from now? You're probably going to be raising a lot more than that. Maybe it's 250, maybe it's 300, depending on where you're at. Well, if you have those fields that are yielding 300 bushel, I don't care what your CEC is. You really have to be concerned with how much nitrogen you're putting out and when you're putting it out. Here's part of my thing is, okay, let's just say, yeah, your soil can hold everything you want to put on this year, but when does your crop need that nitrogen? You know, a lot of that nitrogen, it's not going to need until June or July. Well, that's a a long ways in advance. Yep. You've got to protect that nitrogen. You've got to put a little bit out now, a little bit out later. In our trials, we almost always see more yield. If we spoon feed that nitrogen out just a little bit as we get to different growth stages with the corn. Okay, I'm not gonna go quite that far that we're always going to see, or even almost always gonna see more yield. If you do this thing right, and you're not going for a tremendously high yield, and you do have heavy ground, you can put it all out in the fall if you choose to. But the most important thing when you're gonna be applying fertilizer is what type of fertilizer are you putting on? So for example, if you were to go out and put urea on, or you were gonna put liquid 28% on, you've got a lot greater chance of loss than if you put anhydrous ammonia out. The reason why is anhydrous ammonia, that ammonia, is going to convert to ammonium just about right away after it goes in the soil if it seals up properly. Okay, and ammonium has a positive charge. It has a positive electrical charge. Soil has a negative electrical charge. So just by nature, just by physics, we're talking positively charged ammonium binding with negatively charged soil, that's a good thing. What we would encourage you to do is wait until the soil temp drops below 50 degrees and preferably even below 45 degrees and is still falling and then put your anhydrous on this fall and you should be relatively safe. Well, when you talk about that positive and negative charge, there's more to it than that, Brian, because the plants actually want to use that ammonium form of nitrogen. When they're taking in ammonium, they can just put it right to work inside the plant. If they bring in nitrate nitrogen, they have to convert it to ammonium. So they have to spend energy to convert it. And that energy that they're spending converting this nitrate back into ammonium, lots of energy they could have spent in growth, on producing more yield, and lots of positive things. But here's the problem. Ammonium eventually is going to convert to nitrate because of bacterial activity in the soil. So what we would encourage you to do this fall is put on NSERV along with your anhydrous to help stabilize that nitrogen. Again, think about the two factors we've discussed already saving money for you, okay, and when nitrogen is high priced, we sure don't want to lose it. But then the other side is the environmental side. We want it in that ammonium form longer without turning to the nitrate so we don't lose it into the groundwater.
All right, well, let's talk about this anhydrous, Brian. You put a lot of anhydrous on your ground. I've been yep. typically using liquid nitrogen and yep. other forms of nitrogen. One of the problems with using anhydrous is when we're dry in the fall like this, you've got to have that ground seal up or you could potentially lose anhydrous. Yeah, this is one of the areas where we've really seen a benefit to strip till and no till on our own farm. We still have some conventional till acres. I like doing different tillage practices just so when somebody asks me a question, I can say, yeah, we do this on a lot of acres. I like this about this system, I like this about this other system, but you know what? I'll just tell you this fall, we absolutely have more moisture in the ground where we've been strip tilling or no tilling. So in those fields, I can go out with anhydrous, I don't have a lot of worry. But in the conventional till ground where it is bone dry, if that nitrogen, if that ammonia doesn't seal up very well and you see puffs of ammonia going out of the soil, that's not a good thing. You have loss, you better stop doing that right now and just wait until spring and put some liquid or some urea on if you want. Well, don't be thinking that anhydrous is bad. It's the only form of nitrogen that's going to have some loss. The liquids in the dries can have loss as well yep. and you need to protect those whenever you apply them. But here's the thing about anhydrous that I don't like. It's the most dangerous form of nitrogen so you got to be really careful and really responsible when you're using it. Well, you definitely have to wear goggles. You have to wear a long sleeve yep. shirt, uh, protective rubber gloves that are specially designed for anhydrous. And have somebody knowledgeable who's running the machine. So on our farm there are only a couple of guys who are going to run the anhydrous machine. I'm not putting Darren on that thing. I mean, I don't want to do be. that. I don't want to be. Well, <laughs> You know, you've got to be careful about these things. So you want somebody that's dedicated to the job, not yep. somebody that might run off and film a TV show or something in the meantime. <laughs> well, once again, anhydrous ammonia is a good form of nitrogen to use in the fall. Just make sure that you're doing it on ground that's appropriate to apply nitrogen in the fall, not river bottom ground, areas that could get flooded out, things like that. And we like anhydrous because it turns to ammonium just about right away. That will hold in the soil as long as your cation exchange capacity is not too low. So just make sure you're testing your soil for CEC or cation exchange capacity. Well, one other thing you want to watch for on your soil is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 